wondrously saved from Jesus so sweetly abides within abides within there at the cross where he took me in where he took me I'm singing glory to his name everybody singing glory come on let's praise the Lord everybody we're singing glory to his name oh This fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Keeps me clean, singing glory to his name. Let's testify and sing it. So rich and sweet, come to this fountain. Cast our poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. All oh, with victory, glory to His name. We're singing glory. Clap your hands, all ye people. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to everybody joined together. Singing glory. That precious name. Singing glory to his name. That's above every name. At that name, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sing it, glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. 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 That precious name. Healing name, that powerful name, glory to his name, glory to his name, that saving name, that healing name, that mighty name, that powerful name, that powerful name, there's power in his name, there's power in his name. Oh. Give him glory. Give the name that's above every name glory. We lift you high. We magnify you. We adore you. Jesus, son of the living God, my bright and morning star, my lily of the valley, my help when I'm in trouble, my strength when I am weak. I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you honor because there's no God like my God. There's no name like the name of Jesus. At that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. 
Lord over my life. Lord over my health. Lord over my mind. Lord over my family. Lord over my thoughts. And I say thank you for keeping me. Thank you for restoring me. Thank you for all that you've done for me. Glory, 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 glory. He's my help. He's my strength. He's my deliverer. So we sing glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for the blood. 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 Thank you for the blood that cleanses the blood that washes whiter than snow. The blood that delivers the blood, the blood, the blood. Glory. 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 We almost there. Glory. 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 Glory.
Stanley Satterfield is coming to lead us in our invocation this morning. And then following him, uh, Deacon uh, Oren Tieflin will lead us in our scripture. Say amen as they come. Good morning, church. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the miracle that you performed in our lives this morning when you woke us up and started us on our way and brought us into these doors, Lord. But most of all, Lord, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you for the things that you have done, Lord, in our lives, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. Come to the door, come into this building and touch each and every member, each child in this building, Lord. But most of all, Lord, we thank you because you sent your son to die upon that cross, Lord, that we could serve you. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. You are welcome, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. We plead nothing but the blood of Jesus upon each and every member in this church, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did, Lord. We thank you right now. Lord, come into this building, Lord, and just touch us, Lord. Lord, touch the pastor this morning that he will bring a mighty word, Lord. Touch the first lady, Lord, that she will get up and praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you, Lord, because you didn't have to do it. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for giving us a second chance, Lord. Whatever we didn't get right yesterday, Lord, you gave us a second chance to get it right and we thank you right now lord i feel the presence of the lord is in here i can feel him in my body i can feel oh lord i thank you because you you touched me this morning the presence of the lord is here i can feel them when i walk through the doors lord something just got all over me i wasn't feeling too good my nephew noticed it but lord now i'm standing up here and i can feel the presence of you lord you touch this body right now and I thank you, Lord, and I give you all the praise. And I give you all the honor and all the glory because it all belongs to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, better life. Amen. I'm going to be reading this morning from 1 Peter, the fifth chapter fifth through the tenth verse, reading the New Living Translation. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him, and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. May the Lord continue to bless the reading of his word. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me oh jesus i'll never forget how you set me free oh and jesus i'll never forget how you brought me out oh jesus i'll never forget no never oh jesus i'll never forget what you've done for me oh jesus i'll never forget how you set me free Oh Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh how can, how can I forget? Oh how can I forget how you? Oh how can I forget how you brought me out? Oh Jesus, I'll never. Never, never forget how you made 
Give God a great hand praise all over this place. Amen. We welcome you to the Better Life Church of God in Christ, where the Spirit of the Lord is alive and well. Can you feel the presence of the Lord in this place on today? Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of God one more time? Are you glad to be able to lift your hands and your voice and to worship and praise the mighty Father? the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ruler of our lives. We give God great praise, great honor on today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's good to see each and every one of you in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Opening your mouths, praising God, lifting up your hands, clapping your hands and just letting God know that we appreciate all that you've done for us. Hallelujah. Because the story could have been different. Hallelujah. We could be laid in a hospital or in our grave. But God saw fit to keep us. And for that we are grateful. Hallelujah. We praise God for our pastor and our first lady. Hallelujah. Come on. We can do a little bit better than that. Pastor Dwayne S. McNair Sr., First Lady Velma McNair and the mighty job that they have been doing here on behalf of our Father. Hallelujah. Leading God's people for more than 30 years. Hallelujah. Come on. We praise God for our leaders here and their untiring service. We pray for their strength and for their complete healing as well. We thank God for each and every one of you who are in the house on today. Amen. It's just wonderful to be here. Amen. It's wonderful to be here in the last quarter of this year. Amen. This year has indeed flown by, but we thank God that he has allowed us to still be here. The songwriter says, I am still here, and it's by the grace of God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Not of my own accord, but I am still here, and it's by the grace of God. Amen. We praise God for you. We thank God for Overseer Tony McNair Sr. and how he, along with Sister Carissa Flynn, led us in prayer on this morning as they do every Sunday morning at 11.35 a.m., of course, we invite you to worship with us every Sunday morning at 11.45 for our worship service. Amen. We believe that God meets us here. Amen. Not only for us to praise him and to glorify him and to sing songs of adoration and worship, but we come to receive a word from the Lord. We come to be empowered. We come to be encouraged to go a little further in the name of the Lord. We come to receive strength that we may be witnesses unto him at home, in our community, and all over this world. And that's why we welcome you here today, hallelujah, to worship with us. Hallelujah. Each and every Sunday night, join us for the best school in the whole wide world. Somebody shout Sunday school. Hallelujah. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., join us on the Zoom app. Uh, our superintendent of Sunday school, Deacon Orrin T. Flynn, would love to see you. Amen. Join us for Sunday school every Sunday at 6 p.m. And then on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., join us for prayer and uh, Bible study. Amen. We do. We are a praying church. Amen. We are a Bible-believing church. And if you want to grow stronger in the Lord, Amen. If you want to grow that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, join us as we come together every Wednesday night for prayer and Bible study. And then on Fridays at noon, we invite you uh, with our pastor, the Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair Sr., and the prayer warriors of Better Life for noonday prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Amen. Anybody need anything from the Lord? 
Ah, glory to God. Yeah. Don't fool me now. If you need anything from the Lord, won't you just slip that hand up in the air? Hallelujah. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. And more than our personal needs, hallelujah, we have collective needs as we minister to the world. Amen. So take time out of your schedule and join us in one of these three prayer services that we have throughout the week. Amen. Amen. On this Friday, October the 6th, our pastor will be traveling to Richmond, Virginia to worship with Superintendent Barry Winston and the St. Mark Church of God in Christ. Amen. We don't ask you much, but when you can and when you're able, travel with us so that we can support our pastor as he brings forth the word and as we fellowship with other churches within our Reformation and beyond. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. On uh, uh, Sunday, October the 29th at 3 p.m. All right, 3 p.m., 3 p.m., uh, saving the best for last. Join us right here at Better Life Church of God in Christ for our Portsmouth District Union service. Amen. It, uh, I missed the last service that we had last week. And uh, like they, I went to work, and I got a phone call, and I said, what's going on? She said, we're on our way home. I said, well, praise the Lord. Amen. We know that a lot has been going on, and the pastor and our leaders are mindful of that. Amen. That's our service was only an hour long. Amen. Some of y'all missed the blessing of the Lord like I did. Hallelujah. It was only an hour long. And we believe that this service on the 29th will be the same. We don't want to forsake the assembly of ourselves coming together. Amen. Because there's so much strength that we gain from one another when we come together, when we praise God with one another, when we pray with one another. So come out on the 29th for our Portsmouth District Union Service here at 3 p.m. And then finally for our announcements on today, we will celebrate the incomparable. We will celebrate our leadership, our intelligent leadership, leadership filled with integrity, honesty, righteousness, living a holy lifestyle. We will celebrate none other than our pastor, our first lady, Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair Sr., First Lady McNair for their 30 years of labor here at the Better Life Church of God in Christ. Come on, can we make some noise for our leaders? Oh, come on. Let's praise God for our leaders. Amen. People are coming together, people are organizing, people are strategizing, people have their minds set on the 29th of this month because what we do not want to do uh, is not put our money where our mouth is. That's the best way I can think of it. Uh, we don't just want to give them lip service, but we want them to know from the bottom of our hearts Pastor, First Lady, we truly appreciate you. Now we know that all of us are not on the same level. Uh huh. All of us can't give on the same level out of our budgetary, but I've been hearing the testimony. Uh, I'm going to get in trouble. I've been hearing the testimonies of how people have already surpassed their goals for what they wanted to give. Not necessarily had the right income, but they had the right mindset. Lord, have mercy. And when you have the right mindset, you will find a way to do what you want to do. Lord, have mercy. Amen. So get in these meetings, strategize, do what you can. Call your mama, call your brother, call your sister. Amen. If they can't help you, at least ask them to help you in their presence as we celebrate these fine people of God on the 29th of October. And finally, I'm asking every man, every man, I think I talked to just about all of you this morning. We're going to meet shortly after church. 
Amen. Shortly after church, just briefly after the service. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask at this time if Elder Jonathan would, if he has a moment to come and just lead us, amen, in a short time of devotion. Lord, have mercy. Devotion. Today we will celebrate the Last Supper. I love First Sundays because it brings in retrospect the reason why we do what we do. Jesus gave his life so that we could live, so that we may have right relationship with God the Father, so that we didn't have to wait on the priest once a year to share innocent blood. His blood was shed on behalf of all of us. And now we have the opportunity that when we need him, right where we are, you can call on him. When you fall and you recognize where you are, right where you are, you can ask him for forgiveness. He gave the very best that he had so that we would have the very best. And today we honor God today for his love. We honor Christ today for his passion. And we worship him and we adore him and we magnify him as we celebrate and remember his passion. He died on that cross, that old rugged cross. He bled water and blood came out of his side he gave up that ghost but thank God that he didn't stay in that grave early Sunday morning somebody say he got up with all power in his hands come on put your hands together as we receive Elder Jonathan McNair for praise and worship what All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often fall or fail
Come on, lift up your hands just for a moment all over this house. I hear about five of you. I wish that the rest of you would catch up with us. Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, the more devastating your situation, the louder your volume should be. Come on, if you're going through something, let the Lord hear you. Come on, open up your mouth, church. Hallelujah. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry. Oh, everything to God. I would that man. Come on, we are fighting a devil. Come on. 
on, open up your mouth. Come on, begin to intercede for this nation, for this country, for our president. Come on, for the people that have rule and making decisions. Come on, open up your mouth like your life depended upon it. Come on, pray without wrath or doubting. Come on, just for about another minute. Come on, I wish you would get a prayer life and open up your mouth and begin to pray. Don't wait until the gun comes to your school. Don't wait until the murderer comes to your job. Open up your mouth and pray. We plead the blood. 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 blood. As we continue devotion, I need about nine of you to seriously help me out. But I don't know about you, but I'm tired of sickness. I know what the Bible says, the sick will be among you always. But I believe if we pray, sickness might, it might come, but it won't take us over. Can we just take about 60 seconds and I need nine of you to help me plead the blood of Jesus that when sickness and disease come over us it won't take us over it might be a suggestion but it won't be successful come on pray come on open up your mouth come on begin to war in the Holy Ghost come on begin to war in the Holy Ghost sickness in the mind sickness in the heart sickness in the liver sickness in your renal in your kidney we plead the blood over everything that's not in alignment with heaven and we call it correct right now in the name of Jesus come on if you're sick in your body I tell you to lay hands on yourself and say self be healed be delivered and be set free come on lay hands on your mind and say mind you won't be depressed you won't be oppressed but you will be regulated in the name of Jesus I bind every hand that comes to kill steal and destroy take your hands off of God's people take your hands off of the elders take your hands off of the missionaries take your hands off of the deacons take your hands off of the late members take your hands off of the old people take your hands off of the young people take your hands off of the visitors take your hands off of the youth take your hands off of God's people we plead the blood we plead the blood the blood cover now the blood cover now the blood cover now the blood cover our jobs the blood cover our schools the blood cover everywhere we go everywhere we occupy the blood the blood the blood that gives me strength from day to day Say it will never, never, never. It will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Come on, I dare you to command your body to be healed. I dare you to command your home to be healed. I dare you to command your job to be healed. Everywhere I go, I'm taking healing with me. Every person I talk to has to be healed just because I talk to them. Every person I touch got to be healed just because I touch them. You will be healed. You will be delivered. You will be set free. Why? Because the blood says so. This is the one time right here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, be healed. Because the blood says so.
the blood says so. Who gave you the authority? The blood says so. The blood that rolled down Calvary 2,000 years ago, it says so. I might be slow, but I'm still healed. I might not be able to do everything I used to do, but you're still healed. Healed. And I'm going to live to tell the story. I'm going to live to tell the story. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have one word for you. Live. <laughs> Come hell or high water, live. Despite all the naysayers, live. Despite the, the doctor's report, live. Whatever the devil throws your way, live in the name of Jesus. Come on, look at somebody else and shout, live. Oh, glory, 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 glory. I decree and I declare that I will live to declare the works of the Lord. Come on and give God praise all over this place. Oh, come on. Give him praise like he's done something for you. Give him praise like he's made a way out of no way. Give him praise like he's healed your body. Give him praise like he saved your soul. Glory! Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the church say amen. Come on, before you take your seats, find another person and look at them square in the eye and with the authority that the Holy Ghost has given you shout to them live 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 you may be seated in the presence of the Lord Lord have mercy I don't know where we're going with that one but I feel like somebody has been struggling with suicidal thoughts I feel like somebody has been struggling with their purpose in life but I've come here to tell you that God has you here for a reason so whatever you're going through live 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 sister Live, my brother. Keep on living. Keep on living. Keep on living and declare the works of the Lord. Live, 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 live. Live, live, live. God has a work for you to do. He has a purpose for your life. He has a design for you. And I believe that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we're able to ask or even think. So while you're worrying about it, just live. Stop stressing about it, live. Stop thinking about it, live. For I 
I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor all these other things shall be able to separate me from the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ah, for he came into the world not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. You might as well live. 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 If you have the breath of God on the inside of you, you might as well live. Because God has a work for you to do. Tell of his goodness. Tell of his love. Tell of his kindness uh, and just live. Woo. Some of y'all need a vacation. Some of us need a vacation. Amen. Not from being saved. That's the problem when some of us go on vacation. <laughs> we take a vacation from being saved too. <laughs> but some of us have so much pressure on us. Mmm so much responsibility on us we've lost sight of what's important ah oh, lord have mercy god ain't called for some of this stress that we're dealing with some of these anxieties that we're dealing with amen we got to figure out what our purpose is and just stick to that if everything else goes sideways if everything else turns upside down as long as I'm doing what God has called me to do, everything will be all right. I'm not worried about all of the mechanics. I'm not worried about all of the organizations. Amen. The Bible says, go into all the earth. Amen. Teaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've added so much to it that uh, some of us have lost sight of what our purpose is. But we decree and declare today that we will find our purpose in Christ. Amen. And once you do that, can't nobody bother you. Can't nobody deter you. What, what they say about you, uh, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words will never hurt me. Amen. The fact of the matter is words do hurt. Uh-huh. Words do hurt. But uh, when we figure out what our purpose is in life, hey amen, they don't hurt as bad. <laughs> they don't hurt as bad when we know what God has called us to do. Hey amen. Thank God for our passion, our first lady once again. I stand before you today humbled, hey amen, and honored to serve uh, as your assistant pastor at this great church. Amen. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Amen. For your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. And uh, God really knows that I love each and every one of you here. And we are continuously praying for the strength of our pastor. Amen. For the assignment that is upon his life. Amen. And that it's our endeavor to support him uh, to hold up his arms amen to be his armor bearers not just in the physical sense amen but also in the spiritual as well amen so it is incumbent upon us that we do all that we can uh, to support the work of the Lord here at the ministry that God has assigned us to amen the better life church of God in Christ amen it's not men's service but it's God's service. And for that, we are grateful. On today, I praise God for my beautiful wife. Amen. Demika Devon. The love and support that I have received from her. Amen. I, 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 I truly would not be who I am and where I am today. Amen. Without her support, without her love. Amen. And without her care. Praise God for my three beautiful children. Amen. 
God has indeed blessed me. Amen. Dwayne the third. I, 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 every now and then I think of the miracle that he is. Amen. And I thank God for my, my grandmother because she always reminds us. You know, before the, the, the great grands came, it was, I was there when you was born. <laughs> and now that the great grands are here, do you remember when Dwayne came by? Two pounds and 14 ounces? Barely the size of my hand. Hallelujah. And they were doing construction in the hospital in Norfolk, Centura Hospital, born almost eight weeks early, right? Something like that. He born almost eight weeks early. They were doing construction on the hospital, so they had to roll him in the incubator past the waiting room. And when he came past that waiting room, amen, his eyes were wide open, and the whole family had a chance to see him, not knowing, well, kind of, we kind of knew that it was going to be a while before they had a real chance to see him. And uh, God just blessed us that day. Amen. And he's y'all pray for him. He started a new job tomorrow. Amen. Amen. We praise God for the blessing that he is receiving upon his life. Pray for my daughter. Amen. She's a little under the weather, but she is having the experience of a lifetime in West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia, Michaela McNair. And uh, I thank God. Y'all know I'm proud of her. I uh, thank God for these children, and some way or another, they've all followed my footsteps in, in one way or of another. And then my youngest daughter back there on the switcher, Madison LaFay. <laughs> Madison LaFay trips me out because, you know, I, I, I believe, you know, she's the one, she's going to challenge authority. <laughs> She gonna tell you what she mean, amen. If if you if you push her there, she gonna tell you how she feels. She gonna tell you what you mean, what she means, and she gonna challenge that authority. And uh, but God has promoted her. Uh, her first job was my first job at the Chick Fil A God's Chicken, amen. Chick Fil A, Church of God in Christ. God bless you. <laughs> And she was promoted on her job. And uh, I don't know if I can say this. Hopefully none of your friends are watching this broadcast this week. Amen. She, she got promoted on the job. She I said, well, did you get some more money? She said, no, Dad, I didn't get any more money because I figured out I was already making a dollar more than everybody else was. <laughs> so they, they promoted me and left my, my pay right where it was. But that only lasted about a week or two. And she came back to me, Dad, I done got another dollar. I said, well, glory to God. I'm proud of all of my children. Us. Just blessed. Just blessed. Y'all, y'all, I mean, you have an idea, but you have no idea. You know, uh, we complain about so much. Woo. We complain, we stress over so much. We worry over so much. And then, you know, if, if you actually sit back and relax, many of you have a job, or you have some form of income, you have a roof over your head, you have transportation, your children are here and healthy. What else you need to be worried about? I mean, I'm blessed. Let's go to the word. I'm going to be quick. Uh, in and out of your way. Philippians. The third chapter, the 10th through the 14th verse. Praise God for all of you. Praise God for my grandparents. Amen. Strong, strong, strong in the work of Christ. Praise God for Pastor Jeff. Bless you, sir. Philippians, the third chapter, the 10th through the 14th verse, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead not as though I had already attained 
neither were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Please forgive me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm tired. Ah, my body is weak. I've been doing some stuff to my body these past two weeks. Has my body said to me, brother, are you crazy? But nevertheless, I continue to move forward. I continue to make decisions because I see a goal. I have a goal, I should say. I have a goal, and my, my desire is to make it to my goal. However long, it takes however many steps it takes, sacrifices, uh, challenges. I have a goal. And, uh, you know, I haven't really figured out exactly how I'm going to get to where I'm going to get to. But all I know is if I want to get there, I have to keep moving towards my goal. I have to keep moving towards my goal. Uh, the process seems a little annoying. The process seems complicated. The process is sometimes unsure. But I know that I have a goal. I have a goal. I can't really tell how far I am from my goal or how long it's going to take me to get there. So I just have to keep on moving in the direction of my stated goal. Uh, challenges come in our way. Issues, sickness, disease, uh, family problems, financial problems, health problems, relationship problems, are along the journey and sometimes they will discourage you from continuing the journey well maybe this is not what God has called for me to do no my brother no my sister don't allow the challenges of life to deter you from where you know God has destined for your life Many of us, all of us, as long as we have breath in our bodies, we will deal with uncertain circumstances. We will deal with challenges. We will deal with setbacks. But it is incumbent upon us that we don't stop 
moving. We don't stop putting one foot in front of the other. We don't stop keeping our eyes on the prize. Because as long as we keep moving, amen, we are certain to attain our goals. Yesterday, after two long weeks of work, uh huh, double shifts every day. Last week, week before last, I was supposed to work on Friday night. The Lord sent a storm our way, closed the bridge down so that I could be at an assignment that I had in Hampton, Virginia. I couldn't take off. I still had to work. Then I completed that first week assignment on Saturday. Got up the next morning, went right back to work, started the process all over again Monday. Worked eight hours during the day, left there six and a half, seven hours at night, got home somewhere between 11.30, 12 o'clock every single night. I got to Friday, praise the Lord, I was happy y'all, tired in my body, but I got to Friday, my mother and my father were checking on me each and every day, I said it's Friday, looked at my wife, said it's Friday, I said baby you're not going to believe this, I should learn how to keep my mouth shut, because every single time I say this, something happens, she said I said you're not going to believe this, she said what's that, I said I have nothing planned for tomorrow. Oh, glory to God. This was Friday. As I was walking into the building, back into my office, I said, I have nothing planned for tomorrow. She said, well, that's beautiful. I called her back about five minutes later. I said, well, there goes that. <laughs> I was up 5.30 in the morning working a cross-country event at the Bells Mill Park. And the whole time I was assigned there, I was just directing traffic up at the front. I figured it was the easiest assignment. I want to stay out of the hustle and bustle. I want to stay out of where the crowd was. I'm going to stay away from everybody. But then we got to the end, and we were rotating and giving each other breaks and things like that. And I knew that the day was coming to an end for that assignment. And I said, well, you know, Major, let me go back there and I'll relieve, I'll relieve the guy that's way at the back of the park, about at least a half a mile walk back there. I said, I'll just stay back there the rest of the time. And while I was back there, they were getting ready for the last race. They were getting ready for the last race. The last race were the females from schools from all over this region, from Smithfield, from Suffolk, from Isla White, from Virginia Beach, from Chesapeake, amen, Jonathan knows what I'm talking about. They were all from all over the region. And it's about 30 to 45 females that were on the line getting ready to receive instructions from the person who was getting ready to give them the, 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 the cue to start running. A 3.25, three and a quarter miles they had to run in the fields. And I'm looking at all of them, and most of them are fit, and, and, and they're, they're thin, and some of them are tall, some of them are short, but they all look like, kind of look like runners. What he gave them, the, the instructions, he gave them the sign, and they began to run. They begin to go. I'm looking at all these young girls. They all running. I'm just like, well, glory to God. They, they doing what they're called to do. They're doing their assignment. What I didn't notice, that there was one young lady. I didn't see her in the beginning. I didn't see her start from the start line. But shortly, about, hmm, 15 minutes into the run, they were running around, and I saw one girl, and I saw a second girl, and I saw a third girl, and they were just running, giving it all that they had. 
A little while later, they had to go back down and up and around everywhere like that to get back to the finish line, which was right where the start line had started, right beside it. They started coming in. The girl who I saw that was in first, she was no longer in first place. She was in third place. Many other girls began to come and the parents and the teammates from the other schools began to come and began to cheer them on and began to call their name. I heard a parent say, you got to call their name because when you call their name, it encourages them. It, it allows them to know that somebody is rooting for them. It allows them to dig deeper and to keep going forward. Yeah. Call their name. Yeah. Call their name and they just begin to scream and shout for their teammates more of the girls begin to cross the finish line obviously those who finish first they finish somewhere around 21 minutes that means they were running uh, 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 the mile uh, uh, really really at 20 minutes they were running the mile in almost six seven eight minutes at a time lord have mercy i don't ever think i've been able to do that but they begin to come through and uh, they begin to get to the end. And you see the, the, the last girls, some of them were real thin, but don't necessarily mean that they were conditioned to run a race of that length. And uh, one of the runners had stopped and she was standing there with the mom and her mom was yelling, Savannah! Savannah! Keep going, Savannah. The young child looked at her mom and said, can you see her? She said, no, I can't see her, but I know she can hear me. <laughs> Savannah. And before long, you saw Savannah trucking up the hill. Savannah eventually passed through the finish line. All, all these young girls, they were in uniform. They had a shirt from their school. They had their running shoes on. They had their running shorts on. And, and, and everybody had, seemed like everybody had passed the finish line. And, and one coach said, I got one more. I saw her. Everybody was going. She didn't look like the rest of the runners. I know because I won't talk to you. <laughs> she didn't look like the rest of the runners. As a matter of fact, she was a little overweight. Uh-huh. She won't just a little overweight, but you could tell she had some, 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 some meat on her. And she was significantly behind the other ones. The parents were giving, they were telling the students, keep your head up. Don't look down. Keep your eyes up. You're almost there. Keep going. Don't stop moving. Keep going. You're almost there. And I began to get encouraged. I began to get encouraged. And pastor, believe it or not, that's when the Lord gave me this scripture. Before I knew I would be standing here today, he gave me this scripture. I press on toward the mark for the prize. Yes. What is the prize? The prize is not the first place trophy. The prize is not the second place trophy. The prize is not the silver trophy. The prize is the ability to say, I decided to run and I finished. See, what I began to think about, what I did, this is what I did, this is what I did, this is what I did. The coach left to go check on his other runners from Smithfield who had already finished the race. And everybody began to head towards the front of the park so that way they could get ready for the award ceremony. 
this girl had no need to go to the award ceremony because everybody was pretty much done. I was standing there along the last leg of the route. Those who were organizing the route were at the finish line calculating scores, but she was still Her coaches, her teammates had already returned to the front of the park, but she was still. She didn't look like the rest of the people running against her. She didn't fit in as a cross country runner, but she was still. I can imagine that her knees were taking a little bit more beating of those who were barely than those who were barely 100 pounds, but she was still. While the others had to be told to keep their head up, to keep their eyes up on the prize, guess what she was doing? Even though her strides were a little bit shorter, she was still. And I'm standing there by myself. I was encouraged. Let's go! You almost there! Keep moving! You're doing an awesome job! Let's go! Let's do this! Go, girl! You do your thing! Because it didn't matter that she didn't finish first. Second or third, the only thing that mattered that she started a race and that she finished it. Why are we allowing the supposed achievements of others to get us out the race? Because we didn't do it like they did it. It didn't look as good as they looked when we did it. Hallelujah. We didn't go through like they did when they did it. They came out first. They came out with the gold, with the bronze, with the silver. They came out and their, their friends were there high-fiving them. But when I got to the finish line, Nobody was there. I said she finished, she finished that race. And after I started clapping and screaming and shouting and encouraging her, guess what? The organizers at the finish line began clapping and screaming and shouting and screaming for her. Because they realized it wasn't about the first, second, or third place. It was about the fact that she did not give up. She did not give up. And we still had a half a mile walk back to the front. I said, is it okay if I walk with you? She said, yes, sir. You want to know the significant thing about this? And I didn't even say anything to it because we were talking. And then by the time we got about halfway back, her coach had rejoined us. And he began to talk to her and encourage her and, you know, discuss things that, uh, that how they can make, improve her skill. Right? Uh-huh. Sometimes the last thing that we want to hear is somebody criticizing us after we done gave it all that we had. But the fact of the fact is, is that uh, the, the matter of the fact is is that we can all improve on our skill to do it better. The next time to grow, he said, what did you learn from this experience? And she began to say that, uh, you know, when I was going uphill, I noticed that um, my feet began to drag. So next time, I need to bring my knees higher. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm just getting blown away by what this young lady is saying. But one thing I noticed is that even when we started Walking back, she won't even struggling to breathe. <laughs> Though those who have finished before her, they act like they pass out. 
<laughs> they said, no, 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 keep, keep walking, keep standing. <laughs> she finished that race. I'm done. I, I want to encourage you today that, that the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to he who endures to the end. That's, that's, why, that's why that word live hit so hard just a little while ago because the fact that the matter is is that you have breath of life in your body, then you're still in the race. You, you, you're sitting here in this church is an indication that you're still in the race. You've given your life to God and you promised him that you would surrender all to him. You made a decision to be in the race. So why complain? Why worry? Why allow anxiety to grip your life? Why struggle with thoughts of suicide? Hand those cares over to him because he cares for you. Every day now, I'm praying that God will loose the grips of anxiety. I pray and I declare that God's people will be set free from thoughts of suicide. The second leading cause of death of those who are the ages from 12 to 24 is suicide. Do you know that's why my daughter is where she is right now? Because she wants to be able to minister spiritually and intellectually with juveniles who are dealing with mental diseases. The say, Satan has gripped us where it matters and it's in the mind. It's in the mind. And it's okay. It's okay. Some of us are dealing with uh, 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 sexual immorality. Some of us can't control our mouths. Some of us have a lying spirit. Some of us have a, spilling, a, a stealing spirit. But where he's really killing us is where these young folks are taking themselves out of this world. I was impressed with the young lady because she made a decision to be a part of this cross-country team knowing what it would take, knowing the conditions and the hardship that she would put on her body, but yet and still she continued to give it her very best. We have no excuse. God has been good to us. He's been so good to us. And that's why I believe that we are here today because we realize how good God has been to us. What we have to come out of is our self-pity party. Hallelujah. Our de delusional thoughts that we have worse off than what we've ever been. No, oh, yes, you've had some challenges. Yes, you've had some setbacks. Yes, that situation is embarrassing. But God is able. God cares for you. He sees past all of that mess. He knows what you've been doing, what you've been through. And he's saying, I'm still right here. I'm still right here. I'm able to carry you through. I'm able to deliver you. I'm able to set you free. Song of Solomon. Not the Song of Solomon, but Solomon writes... 
in the A clause of Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not given. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I, I, I've, I've made it a point now. I have, I didn't bring it today because I'm speaking today. I have a book that I use only on Sundays or when I'm sitting under the word to write down these scriptures because what I realize is the scriptures will bring you through. They will take you through. Write them down. Don't just write the scripture down, but write, don't just write where the scripture is, write the whole scripture. There's something about when you write something down, it sticks. And that's, that's what that I, I didn't understand. I, whew, index cards. I didn't understand what my brother was doing, uh, 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 Keith Drayford, but he was writing down all of these scriptures and, and committing those scriptures to heart, but he was writing them down because once you write them down, it sticks in the mind a little bit better than just reciting them. The race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, neither Yet bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Second Timothy 4, 7 and 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown in righteousness. Thank God I went back to these scriptures because that's where I was supposed to go. Where are we, where are we, where are we trying to get to? I'm trying to get to heaven. I'm not running this race just, just, just to get to, uh, just to get a better house or just to get a better job or just to become a pastor of a church or just to get some of these uh, uh, worldly and material things. I'm running this race to see Jesus. I'm running this race to get to heaven. And if that's not your goal, you on the wrong track. You're on the wrong track, whatever it takes, whatever sacrifices I have to make, whatever things I have to lose, and that's the toughest part of it, because we want to hold on to everything. But you don't want that thing to keep you from making it to heaven. Do a self-evaluation and ask God, is this, the, the scripture came to mind, to work out your own soul salvation. Work out your own soul salvation with fear. To work out your own Many, some of y'all trying to work other people's salvation out. This is a personal journey. And what God has called you to or to do may not necessarily be the same exact thing that he has called them to do. Work out. Now there are uh, uh, some general guidelines, some standard operating procedures and there are some things that have worked for others that can work for you. So we're not casting those who off who are telling us how to do it, the best way to get it done. Amen. I like the fact that we are a preventative maintenance church. Uh-huh. The best way for your car to survive, and I got to sit down. The best way for your car to survive, except for in your case, I don't know, <laughs> is that you take it back to the dealer at the prescribed time or the prescribed mileage. 
and have them service that vehicle. Doesn't necessarily have to be anything wrong with the vehicle, but I'm going to get that, the oil change. I'm going to get the tires rotated so that it can live its best life. So we like the preventative maintenance church. They told you, they told me, don't hold that girl hand. I didn't listen. Huh. Held a hand, and next thing you know, Dwayne was here. I'm... That's what we call preventive ma maintenance. They said, don't go to that club. Don't watch that show. Don't hang with them jokers. You're not better than them, but you're not like them. Y'all going to miss that one. So whatever it takes, work out your own soul salvation. And when God gives you the plan and the way that he wants you to walk, don't stop walking. Don't stop moving don't stop running yeah. if you got to put the blinders on your eyes like the horses stay focused stay focused elder jonathan press on press on press on Press on. Let us stand. Press on. Press on. Press on. You see your brother struggling? You see your sister struggling? Call their name out. Press on. Keep your head up. I look to the hills from with help cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Press on. Press on. Don't give in. Don't give up. Press on. Read that scripture. Quote that word. Sing that song. And press on. Come hell or high water, press on. Weeping may endure for a night, but press on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Press on, my brother. Press on, my sister. You may have tears in your eyes, but press on. Your husband may leave you. Your wife may leave you, but press on. You may be dealing with death in your family, but press on. Hallelujah. The doctor has given you a bad report, but press on. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to he who endures to the end. When I see Jesus, amen. When I see Jesus, amen. When I see Jesus, amen. Amen. Hey, 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 amen. When I see the one who died for me, hey, hey, amen. When I see Jesus, hey, hey, amen. When I see Jesus, Amen. 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 I want to pray for you today. I'm going to ask you to stay right where you are. But some of us have been challenged in our press. Some of us have been challenged because of the cares of life and the news that we've received, the people that have talked about us, the people that have treated us wrong, 
Many things have come our way and we're discouraged. But I believe today that God is going to give us a new determination, a new mindset, that regardless of what comes, I'm going to keep smiling. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep moving forward because my goal is all that matters. And that's to see Jesus. That's to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. My goal is to make it into heaven. If that's your goal today, raise your hands all over this place. Now, Father, as these hands are lifted, we pray and we decree that they will have a new determination. They will have a new zeal. They will have a new ability to thwart off every dart, everything that comes to discourage, to deter them, to give them th th thoughts of doubt. God, we pray today in the name of Jesus that you would equip them with a spirit of determination to never quit, to never give up, to never take a break, but to move as long as they have breath in their body, as long as the blood is running warm in their veins, God, you allowed them to put one foot in front of the other. Decreeing and declaring that they are the head and not the tail. They are the lender and not the borrower. That you have made them. And God, that you are able to do all that they need from you to do. I pray today that you will give them a runner spirit. Hallelujah. That you will give them a runner spirit to keep moving to keep running this race until you've called us home and God when we won those small victories help us to encourage those who are coming behind us calling out their name yelling and encouraging them that they're able to do it God is with them God is for them. Keep your eyes up. Keep your head up. God is on your side. Whatever you need from him, he's able to do it. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and put those hands together. Give God praise all over this place. Come on, let's give the Lord glory, honor, and praise because he's given us a press on spirit. Hallelujah. I believe that the devil now will not deter us like he has before but we have a new determination we have a new zeal we have the new ability to press on come what may i will press on in the name of jesus hallelujah let's receive our amen hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the lord We're getting ready for Holy Communion on this morning. As a matter of fact, we're going to do this the right way. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There we go. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining. And in every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, or my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. And let me stand by faith on heaven, but stable land 
a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. Lift me up. A higher plane that I have found. Oh, plant my feet on higher ground. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, Press on, neighbor. Hallelujah. Press on, neighbor. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you on today. We thank God for the word, amen, and the opportunity to share in God's word. It is offering time, and the Bible says, upon the first day of the week to set aside a gift in store for him, amen. And truly, we are thankful for you who continue to support the work of Better Life, the ministry here at 2101 Atlanta Avenue every single week, amen. Come on and give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Amen. The electronic ways for giving are on, the, are on the screen. And for those who are at home and watching us virtually, amen, you can give by way of Givelify. You can give by way of PayPal. Uh, we have the Square device here in our church, so you can give by way of credit card or debit card. You give by way of Cash App, and you can give by way of Zelle. I will say this, and we're going to push this as um, the last quarter of this year. Amen. Obviously, it doesn't cost us anything. If you give by way of cash here or if you give by way of check, it also does not cost us anything if you give by way of Zelle. Amen. So all of our electronic givers, amen, if you're giving by PayPal, Givelify, or Cash App, it costs us just a little bit of change. But we praise God for the convenience, amen, that is offered to our parishioners, parishioners to be able to give by those uh, means. So if you desire to help us out, leave them a little more, save us cents on the dollar, amen, uh, we can show you how to give uh, by Zelle. Many of us wouldn't have to even download an app. We do it right there from, if you use mobile banking, uh, you can testify, right? Praise the Lord. If you use mobile banking, amen, many of our banks have offered Zelle right through our mobile apps. Amen? Amen. 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 We believe uh, in tithe giving. Amen. And I pray that you, amen, would not rob God as it concerns your tithe, but give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over, shall men give unto your bosom. It's been a long time since I stood here, amen, for offering giving, but I'll say it. Praise the Lord. God is the source of all of my resources. Amen. And that's why we're, amen. Somebody was testifying right there. He is the source of all of my resources. And that's why I'm not worried about this little, this little change that he's given me to give back to him. Amen. Because it's a blessing to give, amen, more than to receive. Let us all stand today. Father, we thank you for these, your people, who have come and to offer sacrifices not only in praise and in worship, but God, they come to give of their substance. I pray now that you will bind the devourer, dear Father, that you would cause them to excel and that you would cause their gift to multiply in the name of Jesus. We decree and we declare that we shall be prosperous and not broke, dear God. We decree and declare that we shall be the lender and not the borrower. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You can follow the leading of the ushers.
we go into Holy Communion on this morning, this afternoon, we do want to say happy birthday uh, to the birthdays on this week. We praise God for Sister Brittany Watson, who will celebrate her birthday tomorrow on October the 2nd. Amen. Dion Davis, who will celebrate her birthday on the 6th. Yvette Johnson, who will also celebrate her birthday on the 6th. And then that's next week. Praise God. We praise God for all of these birthdays. And once again, we do invite you to join us on Friday. Amen. Pray for yours truly. Have a little outpatient surgery. And uh, I'm 40 years old. Uh, I don't ever remember having to have surgery in my life. And uh, they're going to take all four of my wisdom teeth out at one time. Amen. So pray for me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> y'all pray for me. Because, uh, uh, yeah, y'all know that. Amen. All right. Uh, y'all mind standing for me? Y'all mind standing for me? We praise God for this man. And uh, once again, I thank him for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. But let's put our hands together and give God praise for our pastor, Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair Sr. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I thank God for his goodness today and to everyone under the sound of my voice. I won't before, be before you long, but I do praise God for being here in the land of the living, in the house of the Lord. On this past Friday, I did something that was scheduled to be done on tomorrow, uh, but I wanted to get it out of the way, and uh, I took my COVID shot, and I took my flu shot, and by Friday evening, I didn't know which world I was in, <laughs> and it took me so long to get myself together yesterday, and much of this morning, uh, Deacon Lathan, who says he's, he's going to take them one at a time so he'll find out which one making them sick. <laughs> but uh, First Lady took both of hers, and she's still going like a bat, so I don't know. It depends on sometimes who you are. But I praise God for being here. And, and so it was yesterday evening, and you know how we like it when God, uh, Pastor Jeff, when God uh, orders our steps you don't know what he is going to say or do. So I called Elder Duane on last evening, uh, who was scheduled to do something here today or something in town today and be late for service. He changed some things around and said, I'll take care of it. And um, so we know that the Lord ordered our steps because wasn't that a mighty word that we heard on today? Amen. Amen. I tell you, keep pressing on and and if you ever see the young lady again, tell her she, want, she finished first. Amen. Because if you read the Bible, and if you're in this Christian race, you finish first. Amen. Because the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So we praise God for this opportunity. But before I sit down, or before I turn the end of this service over to, back into his hands, uh, we, we want to acknowledge two things. First of all, we want to acknowledge that this is Breast Cancer Month, and uh, we want to recognize that. And, and I remember way back when, when my wife worked for the House of Delegates, and they said she had a lump on her breast, and how God, uh, be between the time that they did this, were getting ready to do the surgery, they took another look, and it was gone. And to that day, amen, to that day, she has not had that problem since. So we thank God for all of the women that, that the worst thing in the world you could do because back in the day, they would send you a certified letter after they did the mammogram. And the certified letter came to the house, oh, it's negative. Well, why are you sending me a certified letter getting me all stressed out and all? Amen. But thanks be to God who heals us and who gives us strength. Uh, so we want to acknowledge that this month and probably do a, do a few things to uh, recognize, amen. And Sister Jean has some material as well. Uh, breast cancer and breast cancer awareness and maybe we can get a couple of testimonies to come through the church to to share with uh, the members of the church amen yes ma'am and uh, go forth and 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 uh, in the name of the Lord as well we also want to recognize that this day and sister Debbie is coming this day is 
custodial day. Am I correct? Custodial's appreciation day. If you could give her a microphone, she can come real quick as we acknowledge those who are who have been faithful to better life. Amen. A lot of times we take for granted because things are not working, you know, when things are not working right, and maybe you won't even ever notice that it's not working right. Uh, we replaced two uh, toilets in the bathrooms on last week, uh, well, the week before last in the women's bathroom, put a new toilet there, and then we put the new urinal in the men's bathroom. And I know the men won't recognize it because when people are doing their jobs, you know, uh, it's good. You know, it's good when you don't see a thing, it's because somebody's doing their job. Amen. So thank God for her, and we give this, this moment to her at this time. Amen. Amen. I um, want to ask if Deacon Stanley Satterfield will stand, Sister Virginia, Virginia Holt, Sister Phyllis Harrison. I don't see Sister Eleanor. Okay, and Miss Leilani, if she would stand. And I have a letter that I'm going to read. And it says, Dear, and the, the person's name, Happy National Custodians Day. October 2nd is the official day that offers us an opportunity to extend our sincerest gratitude to the custodian staff who work faithfully throughout the year to maintain the upkeep and cleanliness of the church. Today, I would like to personally express my appreciation That's for me all talking. that you do. That's me talking. <laughs> and more importantly, for who you are as we serve together here at Better Life Church. The work you are doing keeps Better Life looking good. I am sure there are days when it may not seem like a job or a ministry that is having an impact on people, but I assure you it does. You are key to our good image. Hard work spots, spotlights the character of people. Thank you for working hard. Your dedication to maintaining the cleanliness and order, orderliness of our church has not gone un, unnoticed, and I am immensely grateful for your dedicated service to the body of Christ. Romans 12, four through five says, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. Your commitment to excellence makes a difference. Again, thank you for your selfless labor of love and your willingness to use your gifts and abilities to strengthen our mission and ministry. You are a blessing to me and the congregation. As you continue your good work to support better life, may God continue to richly bless you. Yours in Christ, Dwayne S. McNair, pastor. Thank you. And Miss Leilani, please see us before you. Yes, First Lady said we need to take a picture. Amen. So if y'all could come on and I will take a picture with you. You also notice we also passed out another uh, notice to you because during this fall season and probably through the winter season, we're going to a, if you could come, Deacon Satterfield, Sister Leilani, uh, Sister, she don't want to come out front because she got four legs. That's all right. Can't play basketball with four legs, but that's okay too. Asking God to heal her body. She has suffered a sports injury and we pray that God will heal her. Amen. Come on, Sister. Uh, these people do a marvelous job. Sometimes we have guests, <laughs> guests and other pastors that we meet that come here during the week and they, they always compliment on us on how well the church is kept and how clean it is. Amen. who works with them, amen. Thank you, come on, let's give them a hand. Deacon Satterfield and Sister Eleanor started with them and he's also the maintenance person and when uh, he works also for his baby sister in Virginia Beach and 
I thank God for that because she can boss him around and I don't have to. Amen. Praise God. He didn't want to tell me that the Redskins lost last week, but uh, that's another story. <laughs> Amen. I think I'm finished and Elder Dwayne is coming back, but there's one more thing I, I remember. I'd like to recognize Sister Diane Williams. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. She has been visiting us these past few weeks, and we do not want to forget that. And thank you for your faithfulness. I know that you are looking for a church home, and I pray that somewhere in your journey that you will find better life as a part of that. We need all the help we can get. Amen. But we thank God for you and hope that you've been blessed in joining the earth. God bless you. Thank you. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows and it flows to the lowest valley oh yes the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Oh, that Jesus was betrayed he and his disciples entered into the upper room and they began to break bread and I'm going to ask that if Elder Oren Flynn would pray the blessing over the bread which represents his body and Elder Parker to pray, pray the blessing over the cup which represents his shed blood today for this great opportunity to partake of this bread hallelujah that symbolizes your body Lord we pray that you bless it as, it, as we take it hallelujah that it might inspire us more to live for you and we pray it in Jesus name amen hallelujah Father we thank you for allowing your son to be sacrificed for the redemption of our sins. Lord, we thank you that he endured the pain and the suffering on the cross, being temporarily separated from you so that in the long term, we would have the right to be reclaimed as your own. Now, Lord, we ask that you will bless these cups and the juice therein, that it will symbolize the sacrifice that you made that as we take it, O oh God, that it will be a constant reminder of the miracle, the sacrifice, the love that you had for we, your people, that we could live again because of your great sacrifice. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray and we thank you. Amen. We do praise God for this is one of the three ordinances of our church. When Jesus began his earthly ministry, he found John the Baptist and John the Baptist baptized him. One of our ordinances is, is water baptism. On the night in which he was betrayed, he girded himself with the towel 
and he wash his disciples' feet. Our second ordinance is feet washing. And here today we stand to celebrate Holy Communion, the third ordinance of the church. And as they were in that upper room, he took bread and break it and pass it among his disciples. And he said, take, eat, for this is my body, which was broken for you, and they ate together. In the same like manner, he lifted up his cup. And he said, this is my blood, which, is, which was shed for the remission of your sins. And he passed the cup and they drank all of it. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, They sung a hymn and were dismissed. Oh, one day when I was lost, 